Welcome to this study about trusting in God or having bitachon in the Lord, in Hashem. Torah study and trust in God are two aspects that are pertinent to occupy himself, oneself, in Torah study. Really, what creates trust in God is, in, in fact, the study of Torah. Trusting in Him, in, in, in Hashem, for sustenance. It says by Perkei Avot, if there is no flower, there is no Torah. And what we find here is the fact that if there is no way to support ourselves financially, if there is no money coming in, if there is no way to sustain us, we, our time with Torah is set aside in order to prioritize, to try to survive. This also applies to the issue that if there is no money, there is no growth, there is no result of our labor, there is also no Torah. In Kemach, in Torah. No flower, no Torah. Trusting in him for success in one's studies is one of the basic elements. We shall first try to explain the second aspect of Rambam's statement in this important principle in Hilchot Deot for one. An ill person cannot understand or acquire any of God's wisdom, and man must therefore keep away from anything which might harm him and do things which heals and strengthens the body. Now this constitutes part of man's endeavor in this matter, along with protecting one's health. He must trust in God to keep him healthy and strong and free of pain and suffering, and so that we may study Torah with peace of mind, of soul, as we've written, as has been written, in, in, in quoting Chavot HaLevavot. Now there are disturbance and concerns and a discussion about performing the mitzvahs, the commandments, as we, we, we saw last week. Chavavot HaLevavot states that it is not in man's hand to complete the action. The same applies with regard to Torah studies. Hence, we must trust in God to free us from our concerns that might disturb our Torah study and enable us to cope with for those from which we cannot escape, such as those... Uh, that pertains to our home, our children, so that they do not disturb our peace of mind. To this we refer to our prayer and, and unify our hearts to love and fear of God, of God's name, and we, where we ask that we are able to concentrate on Torah and the fear of heaven without anxieties or distractions. A little or minimum of sleep. Minimizing sleep is one of the 48 qualities by which the Torah is acquired, it says in, in Perkei Avot, chapter 6. The term minimizing sleep is used not to sleep little, to sim imply that one must not sleep more than is necessary, yet one should sleep enough, in the words of the Torah Zahav in Evan HaEzer, chapter 25, verse 1. Some scholars have deprived themselves of sleep and study the Torah exceedingly, while others sleep much in order to be strong and energetic to study Torah. The, the later are able to learn twice as much as the former in the same amount of time. Surely both receive the same reward. He who sleeps much in order to be alert is rewarded, and he who sleeps much in order to be alert is endowed by God with the same portion in the Torah, as he suffers by sleep less, by sleeping less, because everything is in accordance to one's intention. Now, I've acquired this entire statement to instruct our fine young men who minimize their sleep exceedingly and thereby damaging their bodies and their minds in the belief that this is the only way to acquire Torah. Since their bodies cannot take this for too long, they eventually wind up with various illness, God forbid. They gain, their gain is thus offset by their great loss because they will have to completely interrupt their studies for a period of time in order to regain their former strength. And anyone who can see clearly regain, uh, will avoid this, such behaviors, especially in our weak generation. Mash, mashkachims, or overseers that are, are, are learning places, yeshivots, must warn their students about this because of the great harm that such exaggerated diligence has inflicted on our young young people. It is well known that the Chofetz Chaim vehemently opposed such behavior in his yeshiva in Radin. Proof of, of what I just mentioned may be deduced from the Magen Avraham in Arachayim 576, who said that when a public fast is declared due to a calamity, everyone must fast except boys under the age of 18 and pregnant or nursing women. We see also that the age of 18, the body has not yet attained its full strength, so that even one day of fasting can be have a deleterious effect on it. Perhaps for this reason, for the adage from the 18 to marriage canopy, not earlier. Now the desire and diligence, though the main 
theme is trust in God. We have mentioned several times that a condition of trust is that man must use his own efforts when it can be expected that they would help and bring the desired results. Consequently, one should ascertain what constitute legitimate efforts regarding the Torah and the mitzvot. Necessary for the mastery of Torah are strong desires to learn and diligence. Rabbi Yona in, jo- in Mishlet chapter 2 verse 4 stresses that it's very important that the Torah study be pleasant and not a burden. Even if one forces himself to learn, one must rather learn with joy, with much love, as it's written in Psalms chapter 119 verse 162. I rejoice over your words like one who finds great gain. He adds that one's understanding and retentions are directly proportional to one's enjoyment of the effort involved in delving in his study. In other words, be a lover of Torah, learning. As the psalmist says in, in verse 111, your decrees are my eternal heritage. Why? Because they are my heart's delight. Delight in the Lord with all of your, your, your might. One should always study the part of the Torah which is his, his heart's desire. We see success in learning is related to this desire or to his desire. The Rabbeinu Yonah explained in this verse in Mishle, chapter 2, verse 4, If you seek it as you do silver and search it as you do for treasures, as follows, someone to whom it is told that a treasure lies buried in a certain valley will not feel it to be a burden to search for it, because he expects to uncover a great treasure and become instantly rich. So it is with one enjoying the acquiring wisdom. He will not consider it a burden to study Torah. Rabbeinu Yonah has this, thus enlightened us by revealing to us the 